and we're excited to be starting the uh, 2014 uh, football season here at home this week uh, against Louisiana Tech, uh, against Coach uh, Skip Holtz and his staff. Uh, well, I'm, you know, I've only been there a short while, but I'm sure we'll, you know, coming into year two, are looking for, uh, you know, looking for an, for a great year. Uh, it's a good, solid football team that uh, really, you know, plays well in, in all aspects of the game. Um, as far as us and the way we've had, I thought uh, we've had a great uh, summer two-a-day, not really two-a-day, but summer camp and leading up to the fall. Uh, we Probably the healthiest we've ever been uh, and have had the fewest guys out of practice maybe that we've ever had through, you know, through this month of, or, uh, of practice. And uh, so I, I feel like we have more players that have gotten the, st uh, the snaps necessary to be prepared to play. So I, I feel like we'll be deeper uh, overall as a team uh, with guys available and ready to play. Uh, and, and, and also I, I feel like the direction uh, of the offense, uh, you know, not having a, you know, two quarterbacks trying to tailor things to two different guys to being able to have it all to, to uh, you know, geared towards Trevor. And him getting all those snaps, I, be, I believe it's going to lead to more consistency in the offense and, and in our quarterback play and in the players really supporting Trevor. Just, uh, again, being, being able to tailor it all, all spring, all summer uh, here through, through this time, I, I believe we're much further along in knowing exactly how we want to, uh, the offense to work. And, and, and same thing defensively, I feel like we're much further along uh, obviously, a year ago, we just started putting in our, our 50 front at this time and, and had to work through a lot of kinks. And having worked through all of those now, I feel like we're in great shape uh, in what we want to do and players understanding it and the different wrinkles and how we want to attack people. And so I, I hopefully that will lead to fewer uh, you know mental mistakes and better play overall. I, I believe it could and, and will. Um, uh, experienced kickers back, both punter and kicker Jed Barnett and Michael Honeycutt uh, are really uh, have done an excellent job. Wesley Horky, the snapper, also I believe our efficiency and timing there is going to be really good. Um, and uh, outside of that, I think everybody you have the captains. I'm really proud of those guys, uh, all our captains, uh, guys that are. Uh, really great leaders here, uh, demonstrated all the things you want uh, from a student athlete and are, are really great workers. So I, I really believe the leadership on the team is strong and what you want it to be as well. So uh, just anxious, anxious here to, you know, to get started with, uh, with the week and, and to get into game week. Everybody's tired of around the country, tired of looking at your same guys uh, lining up across from you all the time. And it'll, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to you know, the challenge of competing in, in these games. What's the status of Frank Shannon? Uh, Frank Shannon, uh, at this point, uh, nothing has changed. That situation is still unresolved. Uh, therefore, I've got to proceed with players I know are going to be available to me uh, through the rest of the year. So uh, at this point, the depth chart is as it is. Can't he play, though? I'm not going to say anything else in regard to that. That situation isn't resolved. Is it better, Bob, when for the team, for the players involved, for the uh, their backups, uh, for their parents and families and such, is it better that you guys are going into the season now? You've got some of these questions answered. There's there's less uncertainty. Is that a better thing, or, or how would you quantify that? Uh, there's no way to quantify it. They're, they're, our guys go to practice every day, and the guys that are on the field have competed in a great way, and I, I feel like we're in a great position, ready to start the season. Whether that whether they have their teammates there or anybody else it's the same preparation same I guess mental we got a hundred and we got a hundred and whatever 15 to 20 guys out there is it different? though when you're you've got a guy like Doriel for instance who's six foot six and he's got a special skill set and you're working with him in the preseason and then all of a sudden you know he can't be there you can move on to the we next got, guy we got ten other guys or eight other guys whatever it is that we're working with on a daily basis mm -hmm. so you, you you work with what's available to you them are six foot six though. I mean, that's I guess not what a couple of them are, but you know what I mean. And Sterling isn't six foot six either, and he doesn't seem to have a whole lot of trouble. So, right. Bob, speaking of uh, height as that, that that position, do you talk about some of the bigger guys that are going to be a small one apparently is going to play, but some of the younger ones may not? Uh yeah, you know the um, we'll see. Um, 
You know, we're uh, Dan and Cadville, uh, Jordan Smallwood are guys with some, you know, with some some good height, but you know that might be you know ahead of some. But you know, we're we're gonna keep all those guys available and and, and wait and see. You know. You expect Doriel to be back in 2015? Uh, that isn't something that's been decided. Uh, I mean, I, right now it's, it seems like that he that he wants to do that and, and is uh, heading that way, and, and we want to support him in every possible way. So part of that, I guess, is going to class and things like that, staying eligible. And that's in the, the heat. I just uh, saw him a half hour ago, and he was on his way to class. You guys went out and got him, or, or reached out to him, or I'm going to speak about to guys that are set to play this week and in the coming weeks. We're not going to, you know, that's. That's all I'm going to speak about here. And I'm usually that way with guys that aren't playing. Yeah. Bob, what fr- what fresh this isn't the first time. In, in impact this year? Um, Samaj P. Uh, P. Ryan is a guy that, that definitely will play. Uh, Micaiah Quick definitely set to play. Stephen Parker set to play. Uh, Jordan Thomas uh, set to play. Um, seems like I'm... Uh, Really excited about what Matt Romar, redshirt freshman, is doing at uh, backing up uh, Jordan Phillips right now. Uh, what other freshmen? Um, oh, yeah, Dimitri Flowers. Thanks, Pete. Uh, Dimitri Flowers, definitely uh, really excited about Dimitri. I know you guys are tired of hearing me say that, but uh, really, uh, really a good athlete in his position. Um, anyone else? Yeah, Marcus has a chance. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Marcus is close, really close. Really, really, uh, really like what Marcus is doing, and and just want to make sure if, if we do, hopefully that you know he's going to get the snaps that are going to make him better for next year. You know, but a lot of times, even if the snaps are somewhat limited, a lot of times those players are much further along their second year when they're getting significant time than had they not been in the game plan the, the year before. So we'll see. We're we're. You know, Marcus still has a chance, yes. What was the experiment, I guess is what you might name it, from last spring with Julian Wilson at corner? Is that over and you're committed to what you've got? It went, went as good as I could have ever hoped for, or not I, we. Um, he he, he uh, is so intelligent. He, he was recruited as a corner, so he has that kind of speed, has length uh, with, you know, being a 6'1", six, 6'2", six, guy. Um, you know, and, and a guy that's been on the field for now going on three years. You know, this he's he's used to being out there starting and playing the whole game. So he he uh, you know he went all summer doing it, and then when we got a chance to work with him out here, it looked like he's been doing it for five years. So it's it's really positive. How's your running back situation? I mean, who's kind of hit there? Anybody? Ford. You know, both those guys are pretty close. Uh, Alex uh, Ross and Keith Ford are very, very close. So, you know, it, it, it's something that you're going to want to see in the early, uh, you know, games. Is anybody ahead of the other who, uh, assignment-wise, protection-wise, ball security-wise, is anyone better than the other? And who's, you know, who's making the plays that are there and who's making plays that are kind of, extra in that he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have got 30 and he got 30 you know so those are things you'll you'll you know when you you snap the ball hopefully 80 times you 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 get a chance to to see all that what about p Ryan? where does he fit into those two uh he's uh behind them just like it is on the depth chart so uh, but again guy that we really like what he's doing how's uh, jordan evans look how's he been progressing this preseason Jordan's looked really good. Uh, you know, he was held out early just because of an illness, but once he was over that, he's he's stronger. He's up to about 220 now. He's you know he's big. we he made a few plays in our our Friday. It wasn't a scrimmage, but we we kind of simulated a game, and he made some nice plays. And just the offensive coach is commenting on his length in there in the middle. He's just hard to get the ball over and. Uh, you know, so he's he's been really solid, and you know, a guy that played you know a lot, not a lot, but he played some a year ago, so he's ready for it. He, same guy we saw in the spring, I guess, right? No, he's he's about six months older than that, and he's a whole he's a whole summer with Smitty different than that okay. too. That that's significant. Makes a difference. These yeah. young guys change a lot in six months when they're the way they train and run and. You got you got quite a bit of depth in a lot of places, but not at linebacker, especially with Shannon's situation. Is that one of the areas that concerns you? Is 
Linebacker depth? Well, uh, you know, everything concerns you, but, um, you know, Rashad Favors is another guy that's an older guy that could go, uh, that's playing um, Jack and and uh, inside linebacker and, and a guy that was recruited in there. So he's another guy that can play in there that, that we really like. You know, Rashad really does uh, do, do, a, do a good job in there. Coach, you're playing a team with a new defensive coordinator. Going into that, do you spend more time focusing on the personnel that's coming back or what that coach has done in uh, past jobs? You do both. You're always trying to assess, you know, the, the talent and the, and the people you're playing against. And then you, you know, usually, you know, and then not usually, a guy that has a track record, he's going to have, you know, his schemes, they come with you. When, you know, when I was a deep corner coordinator and I left Kansas State to go to, uh, Florida, I didn't change and go with what they were doing. I brought what we were doing with me. So that's usually what happens. So that's that's how we'll look at it. Talk about Blake Bell, the transition from Blake Bell. Yeah, Blake's been, uh, it's been really solid. Um, you know, he, he loves doing it. He's been, uh, he's really a big target, a comfortable target for Trevor or any quarterback when he's in the middle of the field, wherever he's at. Um, he's got great hands and, you know, he's, uh, he continues also, you know, the, the, the different lifting and training from a quarterback to a tight end here through the year has helped him, uh, you know, get stronger and bigger and, and, uh, you know, so the blocking is, has been solid, but, and, and I think that's something as we go through the year that'll, that will improve the more, the more he's on the field and the more opportunities he gets. Uh, you, you mentioned how well Julian's done at uh, at corner, and I know he was recruited to be a corner. What? Why did it take so long for him to get to play corner? I guess. Well, we needed a, uh, the way we were playing the nickel position. He fit really well. Aaron Colvin was pretty good on the other side. Um, you know, it just it, it, we didn't feel we we really. Uh, you know, and that now with Eric, I guess the other part of that is a year ago, we rushed Julian probably more than we dropped him. And we start thinking, Mike and the defensive coach as well, who would you rather have rushing out there, Eric or Julian? It's pretty evident we'd rather him. So, you know, all those things entered into it. So, uh, you know, in some instances, not having a nickel on the field as much, naturally, you know, it, it, it fit Julian out there. So. I, I think all of that, and, and you have an experienced guy that you feel where's the best spot for him. So, you know, all of those things kind of put it that way. Had he asked to play corner before this season? Uh, no, because he was playing so much, you know, in the nickel spot. Bob, what's the, uh, what was the injury to Cody Thomas, and what's his availability? And do you It was just a muscle strain, uh, but I'm not going to say specifically where, but it was minor, and, and, uh, <clears throat> You know, he was throwing Thursday and Friday and is expected to be uh, full throw with, with everything we're doing today. Do you expect, there, there's so much talk about keeping Trevor healthy. Yeah, do no, you, no kidding, just well, like do, do NFL and everywhere else. Yeah, do you anticipate playing or, or, or getting the second quarterback in any earlier this year than you have the past, or is it, will it be the same policy, policy you've had? Well, we'll see. You know, that's uh, that's something. Whenever you have the opportunities, you you do try and work with them. But it's easy to say stick them out there anytime, and all of a sudden something goes wrong, and you're behind seven. It, it, it's easy to say when you're not the one that's accountable for it. So, we'll we'll manage like we have, but hopefully we'll have some opportunities to get other guys in there. And I, I I'm not discounting what you're saying. It, it is it is good if you you can get their feet wet in the right ways, as long as it doesn't hurt you. You know, and so we'll see. Bob, was, was Bell throwing the passes he did in practice last week a product strictly of Thomas' situation? As a, yeah, because of uh, Thomas' situation, um, probably uh, as much as anything, too, wanting to redshirt Justice Hansen. Uh, you know, all of that together, not having Baker's situation resolved. It never hurts to have a, you know, to have a uh, an emergency plan, you know, and you could always uh, – you know, and Blake, it was it was easy. I don't want to say easy for him, but he went in there and you wouldn't have noticed. You know, it is again once you know the entire offense, you know it. And he uh, so he went in there and, and really handled it quite well. Coach, speaking of injuries, Sam Bradford goes down this past weekend in the preseason. Have you had a chance to talk to him? And any what's it like seeing a former player of yours? Uh, yeah, we hated it. All everybody in our offices, you know, just 
crushed. You know, you just hated for him. He was doing so well, and you saw him. We, he was around a lot this summer. How hard he worked and how good he looked. You know, with all his training. So it's just unfortunate. Um, I reached out to him through a text, let him know that hey, we were all here thinking about him, praying for him, and whatever he needed. You know, everybody here at OU and myself, we're we're here for him when it, what when and whenever he needed anything. And uh, but I haven't heard heard from him and didn't expect to. I mean, I'm sure everybody's reaching out to him, and that's. Sure, he's just processing it all himself, and you know, on the whole journey again to, you know, to re recovering from it. Did you hear about Gabe Eichert as well? Uh, I did. Yeah, and I. Uh, side, guy trying to get his career started. Yeah, I know it. I know it. It is, you know, and it's just you, you hear about it every week with with different guys. So it is. It's just unfortunate, and it's part of the game. That's you know, it's always been here and isn't going away. You know, it's those, tough. Those are guys that. Th those are two examples. I guess there's a lot, but. Those are guys that kind of changed their bodies, you know, added a lot of muscle really fast and a lot of weight really fast. Um, and there's a theory out there that if you do such a thing, you leave your ligaments and, and stuff, uh, tendons susceptible to injury. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, Chris Chester's been in the league for what, 11, 12 years now? He hadn't had much trouble with it. And, and I didn't notice Sam all that much different. I mean, what? he's only 220 now. What, when he played here, he's 210 maybe, right? He's not that much different. So you can you can say all kind of things, you know. In the end, uh, you can make a case for anything. Bob, you guys have done a great job, certainly down the stretch last year, playing with a not, I don't know about a chip, I'm sure, playing with an edge. Uh, do, do you find an edge this year? I mean, is it? Uh, I saw the other day some of the ESPN guys are calling Oklahoma the most overrated team out there. Do, do you look for an edge? Uh, no, it's 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 more. You can't trick people into wanting to play. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it, it gets down to it's your pride in in, in performing well, and and uh, you know every opportunity you've got a chance to win or lose. And 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 our guys are not understand. We don't usually show up and not get somebody's best shot. So you know we've always got to be ready for that. It's been that way for 16 years since since I've been here. Or, Maybe it wasn't that way in '99, but it, it, it was after after that. So, um, you know, so it's it's no different. It's it's the challenge every week. With that in mind, Bob, expectations are so high. Anything less than getting in the 14 playoffs would be a disappointment to you. Uh, I don't ever say things like that. Everything's a disappointment to me, Al. If we don't win the national championship, but uh, that's not going to happen every year. But you know, you you just fight through the year uh, the best you can, and I'm not going to sit here and put those kind of statements out there to be quoted. Coach, what do you see when you look at Kenneth Dixon, their running back on Phil? Really a great player. Um, yeah, 26 Dixon, they're, they're running back, really a, a nifty guy, he powerful, strong, but, you know, he's, he's, you know, about 215 pounds, so, you know, uh, makes people miss him, can run through, runs through arm tackles, really a good player. Um, did you, you name your captain? You mentioned 16 years, the start of your 16th season here. Um, it, it, obviously, in your line of work, it's not often you see a coach in a school that long. It's got to be a fit for both the coach and the school. Why, for you, has this been such a good fit for so long? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, I, I'm, I, first, I, I, I consider myself incredibly lucky and fortunate, blessed to, to be at a place like this for, for so long that my family's been able to to be raised in one place, which doesn't happen much in the coaching world. Um, and and mostly because of, I've said it a lot, first because of the leadership here, President Boren uh, through Joe Castiglione uh, and his staff, the, the support they give us, their, their vision to continue to push our program forward. Um, as you can see by the, you know, the, the finished, you know, athletic dorm, the, the coming renovations to the stadium. We continue to, you know, to, to, to invest in our student athletes and push forward, and and that has, you know, has helped us achieve as coaches. And then, you know, I've just been fortunate too. I've had a great run of great uh, uh, assistant coaches, and and we've recruited, you know, great student athletes, got kids that have been really fun to coach, and some have overachieved, and and uh, you know, so all of it together is just fit. And uh, and I'm I agree with you. It, it isn't easy in today's world. Uh, a lot of people want change just to change or always feel the, green, the grass is greener on the other side. And that's either as someone firing you or a coach leaving. 
And sometimes then when you analyze it a few years later, it isn't that way. So uh, luckily, we've had a pretty consistent, strong success. Who, who have you decided to be your kick returners and punt returners? Uh, I think kick returners first will be Alex Ross and Deron Neal. Punt return will be, um, will be Sterling, uh, backed up by either Sanchez or Micaiah Quick. Mike had said during uh, the uh, media day, Stoops, about his biggest fear was complacency on his defense. Uh, kind of with the, the whole chip on your shot. What have you seen the, through the last month or so of workouts? I mean, did they come back? Yeah, we, we, we've come back uh, stronger, I th bigger. Again, I know we, we have far fewer mistakes. So, you know, I, I, I have, you know I've, I've got confidence that they're going to go out and play hard, you know, and play well. Well, it seems like offensively, you guys the last two years have been trying to get bigger, bigger running back, taller at receiver. How will that change you guys this year? If any? I, I don't know that it'll change us a whole lot. Hopefully we can be, you know, a little more physical and, uh, you know, in the line to move people and to running backs to get a few more yards to receivers to outfight people for some balls and some spots. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know how much it'll change, but hopefully some of that can happen. You, you mentioned uh, you know, just having one, you know, one quarterback, that, you know, and how good that's been for consistency. When you, last year, when you had two guys who do maybe different things as well, how difficult is that to manage throughout fall camp and then the season when both guys were playing? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just more snaps and and more for the uh, you know the other players on offense to have to grasp. Uh, but you don't have much choice sometimes, and, and some of the plays are the same, but some of them aren't as effective with one guy as they are with another. So then you, you kind of gravitate a little fewer of those and a few more of these, and you know, it's just probably more than anything, you just have a little bit bigger of a playbook, and, and, and uh, you know, and you do your best to make sure you're polished at it all. You uh, wearing your regular uniforms to open the season? Uh, we are. Plan on that? What you want to do with the alternate? Or is that something you kind of want to keep in your back pocket for one week over another? Yeah, I hadn't had much of a plan on that yet, so I probably should have. But or <laughs> yeah, I'll defer to the captains and maybe your athletic, uh, maybe um, athletic director Castiglione and the captains can figure that out. What's best? Well, you got some new. You got a lot of new guys at the uh, ball handling positions outside of quarterback. A lot of totally new running backs, a lot of new wide receivers. It seems like that's a position of trust. Uh, guys, a guy like Brennan Clay, not a superstar, but for really four good. years he earned your trust. And you know on third and nine, you could against Alabama, you could flip him the ball and <coughs> something good would happen. That's a very good So very my question true. is, how long does it take for a new guy to earn trust? And what's that process like? Yeah, it, you, you'll you'll watch it unfold. I mean, everyone, it, it, for us, that's a that's a major issue. And and uh, and you're right, guys like Brennan, you could put in, in some situations you really needed something, someone to rely on, and he came through for you more than he didn't by a long shot. And uh, you know, and then uh, you know, other times if you get a guy, he gets out there and he's dropping the ball all over the field, and the other team's getting it. Everyone acts like, "Oh, give him another chance. Don't worry about it." And then because they're not talking about you the next day, or firing you, or and or losing losing the game. You know, when, when it's when it's it's important, uh, and that takes time. So to answer your question, it'll take several games. You know, for for those guys to show that. They're going to be responsible, you know, with the football. I mean, that you, you have turnovers. It's, you're either losing points or giving points, probably 80 percent of the time, unless you know, unless you're right at the midfield. But usually, it's one side of the, you know, field or the other, and and they hurt. If Baker Mayfield's decision is positive, has he gotten enough reps that he would be able to jump into the mix immediately? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I haven't gotten your take yet on the new stadium plans. I haven't heard what you said about that. Well, we're, I'm elated, excited about the new stadium plans. Uh, you know, I, th I think for the fans should be because for them it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. And uh, and I th and again, uh, it was never about 
adding seats as it was making the seats better and making the amenities better for the fans. I don't know, it'll be 10 times the number of bathrooms that they already have and, you know, seats and, you know, uniform seats and on and on and on. And then, and then, uh, and then for us, it's going to make a major difference in the place, the, you know, where our athletes operate uh, and all our athletes on campus in the weight room. And then our and then our position meeting rooms and and on and on. It's going to be it's going to be really special for, the, you know, for the student athletes too. What we're you know providing for them, nutrition area, and uh, you know right off of the weight room. And it, it's it's really positive. It's going to be it's going to be great. That's a great recruiting tool. Obviously, is it? A, and people always like to speculate about your future as the head coach here. Uh, is that a recruiting tool for a coach where, where you know, the athletic director and the president get together and say, if we build this stadium, maybe Bob will say another three to five, seven years. Do, uh, do you, uh, is that something you'd like to have a new stadium? Or? They, they can make sure we're going to win 11, 12 games in the next five, six years. Then you can, you know, in the end, it's, it is a recruiting tool, yes. Uh, be, not, not for me. I didn't need that. But, uh, but it. What it does is it allows us, yes, as assistant coaches, me as a head coach, look at where, look at the environment you get to come into every day to be at your best. You know, what, what the nutrition we're giving you, the weight room we're giving you to train and to build yourself, the, the hopefully, you know, the, the academic center right across the street from your dormitory that you get to walk across the street and get all your, you know, the, your your tutoring and mentoring, whatever it may be, and and so. Um, you know, so they 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 do help a coach, no no question. Um, they, they do. Is it something ever where you sit around and say, "Hey, I'd like to coach in a stadium like that"? It's not any hugely different than what we've got here, but sure. I mean, you you you, you always you know like you know those, those kind of environments. But I, I've been pleased with you know what we've had to this point. But it's time. I guess that's the best way to say it. We have managed really well to this point with what we have and I believe this will help you know the university and this you know in our football program you know for long after I'm here. Well, Louisiana Tech they have a great running back as you talked about earlier but they, they spread out and they do a lot of different things so if they have a good opponent to find out about your defense lining up and getting stressed early at least just how to line up on things. Yes I mean uh, they, they they spread it out with you know uh, with most of everything that they do and you know, run and pass with it like like most everyone is doing anymore. You don't have as much with the quarterback run game, you know, with with this group as you will get with some. But um, but they're they're going to stretch you out for sure. Coach, you mentioned the stability of your quarterback situation. You're about to play a team that doesn't seem certain which player they're going to have as their starting quarterback. Does it make it more difficult for you in preparation, not knowing who they're going to put out there? I don't think so because. Uh, Higgins and Sokol, just the Sokol, the transfer from Iowa, they both seem similar body types in what they do. And I, I don't see that like the quarterback run game would change what your preparation and how much you're working on it. I don't see that a lot with either guy. Uh, so so I, would, I would look at it as they, they you know, have the, the same offense really with either guy. So I don't see that being a, you know, a major deal to us.